Well, we are officially into the holiday season. We have the kickoff of the holiday season with Thanksgiving, um, closely followed by Black Friday, which is you know becoming more and more of a blur, which which is which. Um, and then we have um, Cyber Monday. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's digital. It's on the computer, the internet specifically, um, where there are great deals that are followed from Black Friday into Cyber Monday. Then, I'm not sure that's officially um, a, a holiday, but it's probably getting close. And uh, then um, we stretch into Christmas and then the New Year. Um, but since we are nearest to the Thanksgiving holiday, we're going to park here for a little bit. Um, so what do you have, rhetorical question, what do you have to be thankful for? This past week was Thanksgiving on Thursday specifically, and it is one of the greatest holidays of the year. Families and friends gather there together, and they reflect on all the good things that they have around them. Um, now, when I was a kid, we uh, had, like, it was, like everybody had to share something that they were thankful for. And um, so we'd go around the table, and it was with uh, my family, so extended family, and there were like 700 of us, and it took forever. And uh, um, my dad very much made it a point before arriving, like when we were still in the car or um, before we got there, he said, you have to make it heartfelt. You can't do something lame. So that's my interpretation of what he said. He went on and on and on about it. I don't remember exactly, but that was the point. And uh, um, so as the people were sharing around the table, it would get closer to me. Um, I get more and more anxious of, what am I going to say? Are these? Did I pick something good to say? And inevitably, I would think... Um, back and I would say um, something I would want to say. I never did, but I'd want to say something like, I am really thankful for my toys because after this good meal, I get to go and hide away and play with my toys and I don't have to be with all you crazy and loud people. And uh, that's what I'm thankful for. I never said that, but can you can imagine as, you know, in elementary or middle school, that's something that you might want to say. I would, you know, inevitably spill out something to the effect of, I'm thankful for my family, I'm thankful for Jesus, I'm thankful for having a great life, I'm thankful for being loved. Something simple, yet um, it still would touch into the reality of life and something I'm truly thankful for. Um, looking back at our reading from this past week, uh, we start in the latter part of Ezekiel, and uh, Ezekiel is kind of a mixed bag of, uh, of good and not so good, kind of depending on who you are, who are who, depending on what your viewpoint is. If you are looking from the viewpoint of those who had uh, taken Israel captive, that's not so, it's not so great for them. There's a lot of language against them, but also there is language uh, for the Israelites that they must do better. But at the last part of the book where we read this past week, um, there's a lot of stuff to be thankful for. Um, and after Ezekiel's prophecy and later God's judgment was settled, I can see them, so the, the people who are opposing God, I can, see, I can see them thinking something like, I am so thankful that's done. Because through the book of Ezekiel, we see a lot of God saying, and this will happen to you, and this will happen to you, and this will happen to you. And so I can, I can uh, surmise from that, the people living through that would be like, I'm just so great, that's done. Uh, in James, we see a dedication to God, 
played out in a couple of different ways, one by word and one by action. In fact, we get charged with a call to action. Now, if you're like me, thinking back in your younger years, it, would be, it wouldn't be hard to imagine being thankful, um, saying things like, thanks God for making me work or some sort of sarcastic phrasing like that. We can say the right thing, but doing the right thing is what God desires. Thanks, God, for doing this and this. But our actions might be different. In Psalms, we see a dedication to God and a thanksgiving for all that God's law does for peace. And in 1 Peter, we are called to be the living stones, a holy priesthood. We weren't a people, but now we are. That is certainly cause for thanksgiving. So, could you imagine living in the time of the exile? What about when the call comes back that your family, your nation... Your people will, get, will be getting back to the land that God had um, given over to them. In Ezekiel 44, we read about how the foreigners had taken, had taken over what the Levites had held so precious. So the outsiders were doing God's people's work in God's house. But, because we are on this side of history, we know what the end result is. Let's read Ezekiel 37, 21 um, through 23. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will take the Israelites out of the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from all around and bring them back into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. There will be one king over all of them, and they will never again be two nations or be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols and vile images or with any of their offenses, for I will save them from all their sinful backsliding, and I will cleanse them. They will be my people, and I will be their God. And in Ezekiel 48, 35, And from that day, the name of the city will be, The Lord is there. All throughout the Old Testament, we see God's people being taken into captivity and being released. We also see how they took up arms and fought against wickedness and oppression. They were allowed their freedom, but their comfort came at a cost. Now, in our great nation, the United States of America, we have this ideal not, we have this ideal. I'm not saying one way or the other, but so we have the idea, we go to school, we go to work, we save, we retire. We work our whole lives so that we could spend our last years of the hard work that was spent decades before. The most common thing that I hear from retirees is, my life is more busy now than it has ever been. I'm sure it's similar for what the Israelites had to go through. They worked their whole lives, and then when they got free finally from working for others, they came back to their land, and they became busy building and rebuilding. And so all the work they had done, it wasn't for, it wasn't for not because they were still alive, but they still had more work to do. 
their thanksgiving for what God had done could easily be measured by how they served God. In the last part of Ezekiel, we see all these things that God wanted them to do. Their buildings, uh, the, the land had to be divided up into these specific sections and very specific measurements. And the temple and the rooms and all of that was very specific. Six chapters of this specificity. Not only do we see God's action for his chosen, but we also see his actions against those who oppose him. Let's read James 4, 4 through 10. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. You know, that echoes something in Matthew, right, on the Sermon on the Mount. We see the upside down of those who are humbled are exalted. Those who are poor, they will become rich. The kingdom is theirs. 1 Peter 2, 11 through 23 reads, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. I'll read Ezekiel 46, 20. They will do it here to avoid carrying the sacrifices through the outer courtyard and endangering the people by transmitting holiness to them. Did anybody catch that when you're reading this week? Um, endangering the people by transmitting holiness to them. Anybody catch that? I don't know how many times I've read through Ezekiel. Probably a dozen times at least. And... Uh, I'd never caught that before, transmitting holiness. So the priests are supposed to be doing their duties on the outside and away from the people. But it's to avoid transmitting holiness to them. So odd to think about. Now again, on this side of history, I am thankful that we are the priesthood of believers. 
we don't have to worry about being separated from God because we have Jesus, who is the ongoing intercessor, interce- interceder, the one who intercedes for us, the one who makes us pure. We are holy. So we don't have to worry about this oddity of spilling holiness on the, the, the priest spilling holiness on us because we have that. We are pure. We are purified because of Christ. We have Jesus. There's a very interesting thing if you think about all of the things that intertwine through our reading this week, through Thanksgiving, through the holiday season. And as we continue on through the holidays, through Christmas, through New Year's, um, family time, and just being together, especially when we get to the end of the Bible. It'll be a difference looking at Jesus through the book of Revelation than through the book of Luke. And so I'm excited about it because it's different. We're shaking things up. But we'll see that... um, Let's go back to what we're doing now. Um, It is very great to see how God works through his word. And it is extremely wonderful to understand that he has worked through this specific passage set to show us thanksgiving. So as we look through Ezekiel, we see the thanksgiving the people were going to be giving to God by dedicating their lives to him, by building the temple, rebuilding the temple as he had designed it. It is great to see in James and in 1 Peter how our lives are be to be dedicated to God not out of some sort of a, of a heavy-thumbed, heavy-handed commandment, but out of thanksgiving. We should offer ourselves to God. And it is great to see in the book of Psalms that David offered himself to God as well. Even though the only thing he had was the old law, he said, It is so great to meditate on your word. So, are your actions showing your faith? Do you allow the Spirit to lead and fill in where you're lacking? Do you let God use your strengths? Do you really believe that Jesus is the Son of God? and that he has either brought you back from captivity or he has kept you safe from captivity? Are you showing how thankful you really are? I'll read Psalm 118, 15 through 19, and then Ezekiel 40, um, where did Ezekiel, um, 48. Psalm 118, 15 through 19 reads, Shouts of joy and victory resound at the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live. And I will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. So even through the the correction that God gives, we still can be thankful. We are to be dedicated to God. So again, I ask, do you let God strengthen you? Do you allow his spirit to work in your life? If you are a believer and uh, um, you would like prayers on behalf of the elders, 
we'd love for you to come forward in just a moment. If you are called to be living more thankful lives, if you have lost the thanksgiving in your life and you would like prayers to return to that, or if you have not yet come to know Christ and you want to know what it is to be so thankful to dedicate your life to Christ, you can come forward now as we stand and sing.